Hi, um, my name is Kevin Gregg. Um, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Center for Sociolegal Studies at the University of Oxford. Um, what I would like to do today is talk about my um, work task within the Endows project, which is called uh, Communities, Corporate Water um, and Innovation. Um, I uh, have done previous work within the uh, UK Drought and Water Scarcity Program on drought and water scarcity management options, and I have also had um, a, a so-called scenario planning workshop with, with stakeholders um, in 2016, exploring future scenarios of drought and water scarcity management um, in the UK. But today, um, my aim is to uh, introduce the work task to you, um, to talk a little bit about the background and um, what I will do within the work task. So in a nutshell, um, the aim of the work task is to gain um, a deeper understanding um, of water efficiency campaigns with public sector organizations, so schools, hospitals, universities, but also council buildings. Um, because the majority of water efficiency campaigns is aimed at private customers or business customers, and I'm interested in what makes these initiatives successful or not, uh, and how if they are successful, can be implemented um, across the whole range of water companies and unions um, and weights. Um, but uh, let me start with a question. So where do you think most of us spend uh, our daytime? Well, the answer is actually quite simple, but the majority of people spend their daytime at their workplace. Um, so an office, uh, a garage, um, um, a warehouse um, and the idea behind this work test is to say to start at the workplace um, and look at water efficient behavior at workplaces and maybe we can then translate this workplace water efficient behavior uh, to your home. Um, but let me give you a bit more um, background. So existing um, water efficiency campaigns usually focus on two key drivers of water saving uh, behaviors. So on the one hand, there are technological devices, and on the other hand, there are economic incentives. So technological devices focus on locking water users' behaviors into a particular pattern, i.e. the water-saving showerhead, for example, that reduces the amount of water for showering available. On the other hand, economic incentives seek to harness the financial interests of water users in order to generate more efficient water users, of uh, a more efficient use of water. Uh, or in, in very simple terms, they want you to, to save money on your water bill. Now, these two key drivers of water efficient behavior are sometimes um, portrayed in the, in the literature as by themselves sufficient um, to explain water saving behavior. But our research starts from the idea that it is important to look at the missing link um, of so-called social norms, and I will explain in a minute what I mean by social norms, that may play a significant role in making technological devices and economic incentives work for water efficient behavior. So for instance, just because you have a water saving shower head, or let's say you have a water saving shower head, it won't make a difference if you just simply have a longer shower. Um, now the research on environmental governance um, has coined the term of the so-called consumer citizen, which suggests that individuals' contribution to more environmentally sustainable production and consumption cannot just be explained simply through reference to economic motivations. So it's not just about saving money that makes us being more um, environmentally aware and, and change our behavior. But changing our behavior is key to this work task. Right? And that's um, what I'm interested in. Um, a few moments ago, I mentioned the term social norm. So what do I mean by that? Um, a social norm is an informal understanding that governs our behavior um, as members of a society, um, but it can also go down to like your office level or even your family, um, where we simply put uh, a simple uh, a social norm is a common standard within the social group. So let's say, for example, you enter a room full of strangers. Usually what you do is you say hello or you shake hands, or if you know a person, more closely, you might give them a hug. So that's a social norm. That's not a law, it's not a rule, but it's a social norm. We agree to do this um, when, uh, in this case, enter a room. Um, it's a, a so-called socially acceptable or appropriate behavior in a particular so social situation. And also, if you breach it, 
it has social consequences. Um, so the idea in this work task is to shift away from the individual customer to a more like social or public view on water. I'm interested in the cultural value of water. And referring back to um, my interest in like in the public sector, so in my mentioned schools, hospitals, um, or universities, um, the idea is to say, okay, if we help these organizations to save water, then this is to the benefit of all. Um, so at the beginning, um, I mentioned that water efficiency campaigns usually focus at individual customers. So um, water efficiency campaigns are also a legal requirement for water companies, so they have to do it. But it's up to them how they're actually going to approach it. So it may be just that there's a little leaflet in your annual water bill telling you where you stand against other people uh, within your postcode area in terms of um, uh, water consumption, but it could also be um, an education campaign uh, aimed at primary uh, school children. Um, but to repeat it, this work task will focus on, on water efficiency at the workplace and especially the, the public sectors, so schools, hospitals, um, or council buildings. And the core idea is to find out whether behavioral change at the workplace can lead to changes um, at home. So how do we research this? Um, so I decided to do so-called focus groups. Um, focus groups are a standard method in research and it is in simple terms a discussion round with different people uh, who I recruit um, for this exercise. This will be representatives from the public sector, so for example the environmental manager from um, let's say universities facility management, but of course also those people from water companies who are water efficiency managers who run these water efficiency companies. So during a focus group, participants are guided by questions, but the important issue is that participants exchange views, um, opinions, and most of all, that they listen to each other. Um, and for me, as a researcher, it will be interesting to evaluate uh, the discussion and then draw conclusions from that. Um, so preliminary exercises of this kind have, for example, shown that it may be important to offer positive solutions for water users to be more efficient or to link water saving with issues such as food and energy, think about it for, uh, for a second. Uh, every time you have a hot shower, you of course also consume electricity. Hence, more f water efficient behavior could not only save you water, but also lower your uh, energy. To sum it up, what I would like to see is an increased understanding of the value of water by citizens. We also argue that we may want to start implementing this behavior at places where people spend a lot of time, their workplace. Now, if you're interested in this and to find out more, you're welcome to contact me um, and thank you.